Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the Visual Studio Debugger and how to find errors in your program when it's running. So you can see on the screen that the agenda for our video is we're going to be setting breakpoints, we're going to be checking on variable values, we're going to use a step over function and the continue function. You can see on the screen here that I am looking at an array and we're going to look at the values of a piece of a program. In order to use the debugger, you have to have a program already written. And so you can see on the screen, I have an example program that we created in a previous tutorial. It's a simple program. It's an array of values, five quarters. Every time you click the button here, the uh, quarter is chosen as either heads or tails based on a random number and then it's displayed on the screen. So we have the uh, pictures displayed as heads or tails, and then you can see below there's a label that has five words in it that are either false or true according to the value of the quarter head. And so that's the program that we're going to use. If you'd like to see how this was built, see a previous tutorial in my playlist. But let's get started with the debugger part of the question. How do you test for errors in a running program? So let's take a look at what the program is first. I have the uh, application on the screen. I'm going to double click on flip coins, the button, and you can see that most of the code is inside of that button there. So what do we do? We pick a random number, we set the label, we go through a for loop, and we provide an, a random number to each of those items. And then we finally decide at the end that we're going to show the pictures. So let's introduce an error into our code and then use the debugger to find that error. So right now the code works fine. So why would we break a piece of code that's working? Well, just for illustration. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a common mistake that uh, I would frequently do is I think, well, I have uh, five coins and I know that they start counting at zero. So I need to have an array of four elements. Well, obviously that's not going to work because I have five quarters in my array. So if I choose start, I should probably see the program crash with an array uh, problem. So I'm going to click flip coins and sure enough, the program stops. Now this is where a lot of people do their troubleshooting. When the program stops, they go and look at the error and it says here that the bounds is out of range. So my array is too small now for the number of quarters. So you can see that coins sub four is the part that caused the problem. Now the debugger automatically starts working in this crashed state. And you can see that if you click over here, I have a item that I've added to my watch list called coins. So what I'm going to do now is set a breakpoint in the debugger and I am going to go in to view these things while the program is being run. So let's stop here and let's go and add a breakpoint. So the breakpoint that I'm interested in is right here in the for loop. So before on line 33, I'm going to move my mouse further and further to the right until I get to the little gray area and click. Now that adds a breakpoint at line 33. So the program is supposed to stop there and we can inspect the values of each item. So let's start it again and let's go ahead and click this button called start or flip coins. So you can see the program has stopped here and I have a section that is highlighted in yellow. So we have stopped at line 33 and this expression is about ready to be executed. Now I can continue running this with a button called step over. So let's see if I can get up to the top here and click the little button that says step over. And now I have the next function that's being run, which is the yellow uh, section here that says we're comparing I with the value of coins. So I click the step over button a few times and you can see that as I click the step over, the program executes line by line. Now, I also notice when I hover over these items that I get the value of these uh, contents. So for instance, the coins variable here, and I get a little pop-up and I can expand that and you can see that my array has four items in it. It has zero, one, two, and three. And I can even see inside each of those if I click the arrow and you can see that there's a, there's a property for this item. It says is heads is false. Now, since coins is an important part of my uh, program that I'm looking at, I'm going to go down to here to say add items to watch and uh, let's put in the word coins. Coins is the item that's interesting right now. So let's click that and press enter. And now I can expand the list and see it while the program is running. 
I'm going to expand each of those. And so I can see that inside of there we have false, 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 false. Let's go ahead and continue stepping over the code. And now when I get to the end of the loop, you can see that it comes back to the beginning and does the increment. So right now I is set to zero. If I push step over, I should probably now be set to the value one. Let's see, can I get to I? There it is, I is set to one. So the increment just occurred. So now the for loop is asking the question in the yellow. It says, is one less than the length of coins? Well, the length of coins is set to four. So you can, you can see right in real time here that one is less than four, so the loop should continue again. All right, so we inspect this and we go through the loop. And as you see, as I'm going through, that some of these values are changing from true, true, false, false. So not all of them are heads or not all tails. So they are a mix. All right, so uh, I go through here and Let's go through the entire thing. It should go four times. And you might wonder, why didn't it crash on the uh, loop here and it crashed later? Well, the loop is only going to go as long as the length of the array, which is set to length four. So that's good. If I had set this to a hard-coded value of five, then of course my array index would be out of bounds. I'm gonna continue on and hopefully get to the next section. Here we go. So we are now in the part of the code that says set the pictures. So is there information on these guys? Uh, let's see, I just reached the end and it says now your index is out of bounds. We can check on these values again to say that the coins value has four items in it, zero, one, two, and three. And the item here, the fourth one is obviously causing the problem. So that's an example of what you would use the debugger for if you had a mysterious piece of uh, error that was going on and you wanted to see the code in slow motion. And so that's a great way to check your results. Now let's say I'm tired of doing this uh, step over thing and I just wanna continue. Uh, you can just continue to run the program. There's also some other items called step into and uh, there's a show next statement and then there's a step out. So for right now, all you need to worry about is step over, which means go to the next line of code. If you get into uh, functions and you have uh, layers and layers of calls from one class to another, then step into and step out of is going to make sense to you. But for right now, we're at a real simple level of programming. And for your case that you might need to know right now is all you need is step over and continue, and then to do the trace of each of these items. So let's see, I'm gonna fix my error and then run the program again and let's see if I can make any uh, sense of this. Okay, so it's running and I choose step over a few times and uh, I realize I, I just wanna see the program run so I'm gonna click the green arrow which is continue and the application should come right up here. So we're, we're good. I flip the coins and anytime you wanna come back and check the list, it's still there. So if during the debug session you're, you get annoyed with these uh, breakpoints, you can hover here and there is an option to disable the breakpoint. And so now when you continue, the application runs as if the breakpoint was not there. So there's a, a quick review of what the debugger can do for you. A lot of uh, beginner programs are baffled and they don't know why their program has errors in it. And the only way to find out really of where your program is going wrong is to check the variables and see what values are in them. So you can do this on your own. You don't need your teacher or co coworker to help you out in many cases. So there's a quick introduction to the debugger.